I knew I was out of control. Like I knew that alcohol had me and I was really scared of what they would say, that maybe you need to stop drinking, but I don't want to stop drinking because that makes me feel normal. I thought this couldn't possibly be happening in our family, but it's everywhere. There's no boundaries with this illness. Lots of times people um, will say, how much did you lose? And I say, 10 years of my life. And I lost every last shred of self-esteem and, and I wanted to be dead. Mitzi, come on. Good girl. I grew up in a home with addiction. My mum suffered with addiction. Not that we knew that until she died of it. And I didn't understand at all. So it set me on a pathway of trying to learn about why my mum was like that. And then it reared its head in my own family. Growing up for me, it was a very stable home life. I was sort of introduced to alcohol at 13. I remember the first time I drank and all of those shy feelings just disappeared and I felt bulletproof. By sort of 18, 19, the only escape that I had was through alcohol or other drugs. The message was clear, gamble responsibly. Set a limit and stick to it. And so just do that. And I just couldn't do it. It just wasn't doable. So I had to be the problem. I didn't see a way out. The way I was drinking for me was really embarrassing. Like I, I didn't want to tell anybody because I felt a lot of shame around the fact that I could not stop drinking. I needed alcohol to feel okay. As parents you find the feeling that you're getting from others is that you're not parented correctly that it is your fault that this has happened, which makes you even doubly invested in trying to make it better. Shame isolates you. It cuts you off from any opportunity of being able to speak. It shuts you down. We know it takes up to 20 years on average for that individual to actually seek help. The main reason for that is stigma. As a society, we see any type of addiction as a moral problem, as a failing of the individual rather than actually a health disorder. If we treated addiction like a health disorder, that level of stigma, that barrier to getting treatment isn't there. I tried to stop lots of times. I would catch sight of myself in the mirror and say, well, who are you? You know, who the hell are you? How did you get inside me? I didn't recognise myself. And so I would be so disgusted that I would stop for a while. And then something would happen and I'd find myself back there again. And that happened countless times, stopping, starting, stopping, starting. And then finally, I decided I had to do something more. And I started looking for answers. To not be able to picture life without alcohol and then to enter treatment, it was, it was really scary because like, how do you do life without substances? How do you go to the shops? The bravest thing I did was ask for help. The bravest thing I did was make the phone call to Gambler's Help and say, I need help. I walked in and everybody was very happy and chatting and laughing and I found that really quite comforting. And then we sat down and had the meeting and people were talking about honestly what was going on in their lives and how they were managing that. And I found that combination of seeing how happy they could be and what was actually going on in their lives, I wanted to be able to do that. I wanted my life to be able to go on, even though this stuff was happening in my life that I didn't like. You don't have to be homeless. You don't have to be living in a park. You don't have to be using in an alleyway to be someone who lives with addiction. It can be your next door neighbour. It can be the person you walk past in the supermarket. I'm more than my sad story. I'm the things I believe and think and care about and I want to talk about other people, making it a space that's possible for them to tell their stories. I think we need to really shine the light on that so that people can access treatment sooner rather than live in shame and, and guilt and shorten that time frame that people have to live in that space. Well done, Dale.
If there was different messaging out there, who knows if that could have been shortened and the life I'm living today could have started a lot earlier.